Today on Upfront, Wisconsin's COVID crisis. Cases are surging, especially in northeastern Wisconsin. Next, Governor Tony Evers. We're at a crisis point here, and especially in the Fox Valley. Why does he think Wisconsin's COVID outbreak is one of the worst in the nation? And what will he do if the mask mandate is struck down? And I'll ask, will he run for re-election in 2022? Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Matt Smith, in for Adrian this week. Governor Tony Evers has called the situation dire, and now bars, restaurants, and other public gathering spaces have a lid on them as COVID cases climb once again. The governor announced the new rule last week, limiting the size of crowds in public spaces to no more than 25% of the total occupancy limits. There are exceptions for places like schools, churches, and businesses like grocery stores. Wisconsin COVID cases are surging, especially in the northeastern part of the state. Hospitals in northern Wisconsin are at risk of being overwhelmed, health officials say. So state health officials are activating the COVID-19 field hospital at State Fair Park in West Allis. Every region in Wisconsin has hospitals reporting current and imminent staffing shortages, and at least one region is reporting these shortages in a majority of their hospitals. The State Fair Park Hospital has more than 500 patient spaces. The first patients will arrive there later this week. We're talking about all of this now with Governor Tony Evers. Governor, welcome back to Upfront. We appreciate your time. Let's begin with coronavirus. In the past week, your administration bluntly said the state is in crisis. What's your biggest concern as we sit here today? Well, certainly the, uh, the, the space in our hospitals, especially in uh, uh, Fox Valley, when we're when we are running out of space in a hospital, that, that, is, that is a crisis. Then we have to find room other places. And uh, so that, that is the immediate thing. But obviously the, uh, the reason we're having hospital problems, hospital space problems is because the virus is uh, frankly right now uh, out of control. We're setting records uh, on a regular basis. And uh, uh, that's why we did an order around, fa around face coverings and also limit limiting on gather public gatherings and places too. But the immediate thing is the hospitals. We, we can't have our hospitals be overrun. To that governor in the northeast part of the region, we're seeing some of the highest increases in cases per capita nationwide. Why is that? But well, certainly it's, uh, you know, the basics around this uh, virus are, are still the same. It's unpredictable, but if people aren't, uh, you know, doing what they need to do or wearing a face mask and, and uh, keeping themselves safer at home as often as possible and avoiding crowds and it, there's community spread out there and uh, the, uh, the virus can attack people from any angle, you know, whether it's in, in a store or at, in, at, at you know, being being in smaller spaces so it's we're at a we're at a crisis point here and especially in the fox valley to that governor at this point if you had the ability to entirely shut down the state again would you well i just have to correct you just for a second we didn't shut down the entire state in fact most of the people were deemed essential and we're working through that but what would have been great is that initially when we had our safer at home order uh we were we were able to drop down the number of uh, cases and, 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 fl and flatten that curve. And then it was just opened up uh, in, in a not very thoughtful way. We need to do what the, what the sciences tell us to do, and that's wear, wear a face covering, stay safer at home anytime you can, and limit, limit your exposure to other people. So would you re-implement safer at home if you had the ability to? Oh, I don't think I don't think at this point in time we could roll that out. I mean, it, it's been shown to be unconstitutional, and uh, uh, so I don't believe I have that authority. So we're picking and choosing what we can do. Uh, to that, let's talk about the new order limiting capacity to 25 percent for the next month. Notably, when you look at restaurants and bars, the city of Milwaukee says it's going to continue with its own plan that would allow some establishments to exceed your capacity. Are you going to challenge the city on this? Yeah, we're in discussions about that. Uh, th their claim, obviously, is that uh, uh, their system is is more uh, more appropriate for Milwaukee and it is is more rigorous than th th ours. Uh, so we're we're in we're in discussions about that. It's too early to tell, but uh, I I am concerned. Uh, the, the number of people 
that are in small areas is an issue. And uh, you know, Milwaukee isn't immune to that. So we're, we're, but we're in discussions with the mayor's office on that. Uh, I'm curious if you can't get the state's largest city, which is run by a Democrat to comply with, with this new order, uh, how, how do you convince everyone else to participate? Well, their, their claim is it's more rigorous than my claim. And uh, do you believe so that? I, yeah, and, and I no, I, I, I don't see that right now. And at the end of the day, we'll come to our, our good accommodations, and, and I'm not concerned about that. The, the thing is that people across the state uh, are supportive of limiting public gatherings. So I'm not concerned about the, the, the optics of that. We just have to reach a conclusion here in Milwaukee. Uh, to that point, Speaker Voss said he has requested a meeting with you this past week. Is that something that will happen? Well, I don't know if it's going to happen in, in, in what time frame, but sure, we'll meet at some time. But the bottom line is, we know what I support. I support people staying safer at home. I support uh, fa face coverings and I support limits on gatherings. And, and we know that he does not support those things. So I would sure like to know going in what he is uh, support above. Uh, it's one thing just to meet to say that we're, we're, we're meeting. It's another thing to accomplish something. So um, we know what I, what I support. We know what he doesn't support. I really like to know what he does support. On the state's mask mandate, as we sit here, that is in the courts a decision pending at any moment. If the court does strike down the state mask mandate, what happens? Uh, we'll we'll find another way. Honestly, I will try local get local people to take it up. But I, we believe we're in a good position here. So I uh, that would be catastrophic. Most of the people in the state of Wisconsin do support face coverings and. And uh, they know that it's an important part of uh, keeping safe and keeping their neighbors safe. So we do believe that it will stay in place. Do you believe that fewer people would wear masks if there's no mandate in place? That fewer people? Well, yes. Yes, I do, because people have told me that. Uh, that uh, whether it's in schools or whether it's uh, outside of schools, that people, uh, an order does make a difference. And, uh, you know, I understand that there are people that, that feel that there's a, this is an issue of freedom. but. You know, people don't have freedom to drive 100 miles an hour, drive on the left side of the road, or even drive backwards on the road. There, there are things that we we hold dear in our state, and and this wouldn't be a permanent thing. We just have to get through this. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald told the Journal Sentinel uh, last week that if the court does strike this down, he said he would immediately try to work with you on a new set of coronavirus rules. Is that feasible? Well, it's feasible if we know what they, what it is. They've had. They've had uh, several months to let us know when they are in the Supreme Court in March and April, uh, getting rid of safer at home, which was working and saving lives. Uh, they said they had a plan. I haven't heard that plan. We know what they're against and we know what I'm for. I don't know what they're for. Governor, over the course of this pandemic, your approval rating on your handling of it has dropped. It was at an incredible high of 76% when it started, down to 56% in October. Why do you think that is? Well, people get tired of, uh, you know, get tired of this. People are tired of, of the pandemic. So uh, that there's no surprise there. 56% is still good. And I know that uh, w when things are pulled around face coverings and safer at home and limits on gathering, the numbers are even higher than that. It's just, it's, it's frustrating and tiring for people, but we have to pull together as a state. At the end of the day, Matt, it is about individual responsibility. And if people uh, do what the right thing in order to keep themselves and their neighbors safe, we will get through this. But we have to have a concerted effort at this point in time. Well, the president ha has said President Trump in recent days he wants to get back on the campaign trail very soon after his coronavirus diagnosis. W would you attempt to stop any rally here in Wisconsin before Election Day? Well, certainly I, c I couldn't stop any rallies, but uh, I, I would prefer him not to to have rallies the way he does. He is perfectly capable of telling his uh, folks when they're coming to a rally, you have to wear a mask and you have to be physically distant or this isn't going to happen. He's the leader of the free world and he's got some really su supportive people. If he asks them to do that, they'll do it. Governor, it is a busy time. We have a lot more to get to with you. Next, the Kenosha protests and riots, how the governor handled that and what the public thinks of the job he did there. Plus, I'll ask him about that bizarre plot in Michigan. The FBI says militia members wanted to kidnap their governor.